Using a nonlinear narrative is an interesting and often incredibly effective method of telling a story. By writing events out of chronological order, one can add depth to certain characters, convey multiple perspectives of a single situation, preliminarily establish a mood or atmosphere, or keep a pivotal plot point under wraps until the moment of maximum impact, when it will explode into focus and shed new light on the priorly presented material. On the other hand, nonlinear stories can be tricky to execute smoothly. Unless temporal deviations conform to a simple, regular pattern, or you opt to use explicit timestamps like 29 September in Train to London, or Dawn of the Second Day, 48 Hours Remain, you run the risk of confusing your audience and leaving them wondering if the ride you're taking them on is worth the whiplash. An example of a video game with a successful nonlinear narrative is Universe for Sale, a point-and-click sci-fi adventure developed by Tamisa Studio and published by Akupara Games. The story takes place in a dilapidated colony situated among the clouds of Jupiter and follows two main characters, the first being Lila, a deeply introverted woman with tentacles for hair and the power to craft tiny universes using ingredients like eggs, moss, and soot. Despite the remarkable ability she possesses, Lila's lifestyle is rather monotonous. She wakes up, sells her universes in the marketplace, peruses the other merchandise, and then goes back to bed. Each day feels exactly like the last, even to the point where she struggles to recall memories she considers meaningful. The second character is a mysterious, nameless space pilgrim who has attained the rank of Master in the Cult of Detachment, an organization of Promethean disciples who have the flesh stripped from their bones in order to reach enlightenment. The Master, who is basically a walking skeleton at this point, has journeyed throughout the solar system, met countless people, and sought knowledge from hundreds of religious and philosophical doctrines. And yet, Lila and her universes have captivated him more than any extraterrestrial oddity he's encountered before. The developers of Universe for Sale are self-described veterans of underground European comics, and that background is constantly on full display. Vibrant, hand-drawn art, engaging writing, and intricate world-building create an experience that feels a lot like an interactive comic book or graphic novel. Aside from a few extremely simple mini-games, the most noteworthy of which involves making universes to sell to Lila's clients, gameplay consists almost entirely of exploring the world from the Master's perspective through dialogue with the Jupiterian denizens. There's no inventory management, no optional side quests, and nothing that could really be described as a puzzle. If you're someone who finds yourself enchanted by Universe for Sale, strolling its streets, browsing the bazaar for charming trinkets, chatting with the quirky cast of NPCs, and loving every minute of it, you're likely here for one thing, a good story. This game does indeed deliver a good story, one that's been split into parallel perspectives, chopped up into small pieces, and stitched back together in a seemingly arbitrary arrangement. The reason for the bulk of this nonlinear presentation is actually an important part of the plot, Master is something of an involuntary time traveler, popping in and out of existence across different points of an eight-day timeline. Consequently, the mixed-up sequence of events witnessed by the player is the order in which the Master experiences them as well. Every time he wakes up on the ground in the colony marketplace, we know where he is, just not when. He comes across as befuddled and a little fickle at the start of many conversations because he's trying to determine how his perception lines up with that of the person he's speaking to. For example, they might be someone he's met before, but from their point of view, he's a complete stranger. That might sound complicated, especially once you factor in sections of the game that focus on Lila instead of the Master, but my favorite thing about Universe for Sale is that its convoluted setup ends up being quite easy to follow. One way Tamisa Studio accomplishes this is by associating a physical object with each chunk of the Master's storyline. There's a book of cultist doctrine he reads during a visit to the Temple of Detachment, some shears he's provided with to cut berries from the colony's wind turbines, a battery that powers a stun gun he uses during a revolt, and more. Each item is something the player interacts with in some capacity, whether it's a component of a minigame, a selection made when presented with multiple options, or just an important part of a specific scene. When we're finally tasked with deducing the chronological order of the master's narrative, these objects serve as material representations of each event we need to recall, turning an otherwise daunting exercise into something straightforward and intuitive. Another way Universe for Sale keeps the player grounded in the midst of the Master's time-traveling shenanigans is its clever choice of an opening scene. It takes place in a tea house, where several of the game's NPCs have gathered to sip strange brews as Jupiter's acid rain pours down outside. While the Master waits for his own tea to be served, 
He has the opportunity to wander from table to table and talk to the other customers, learning their names and bits of background information about life in the colony. By providing immediate access to the majority of its recurring secondary characters, Universe for Sale establishes a clear starting point for the player to gauge these NPCs' familiarity with the Master during subsequent encounters. For example, if the Master meets someone who mentions seeing him at the tea house, we can safely assume that the current story segment occurs farther in the future. As the story progresses, this chain of context clues continues to expand, making it easier to estimate where we are on the timeline. Though I did find myself wishing that Universe for Sale placed greater emphasis on gameplay, made the minigames more substantial, or incorporated dialogue options that altered the conversation in more meaningful ways, perhaps, its intriguing story and excellent presentation ensured that I enjoyed every minute of my four-hour playthrough and will be looking forward to whatever Tamisa Studio makes next. If you're a lover of sci-fi settings, cozy games, or rich narratives in non-linear packages, Universe for Sale might just be your cup of tea.